Xbox is about to get better ray trace shadows, better ray trace reflections, more power to work with, and all it's gonna take is a little bit of an update. I told you there would be news from GameStack, and wow, Xbox is gonna be looking really, really good in the coming years. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna go over, and I'm a little bit late on this one, but GameStack has been happening all week, and wow, there has been some news from GameStack Live. This is a conference where developers get together and talk about the tools and ways that they are improving the console. So the first one I wanna talk about is this one that sort of talked about how they're able to utilize the new hard drive speeds on Xbox Series X and S to improve how they design games. Basically, developers have identified this challenge. Uh, the Xbox One would hold up games, but these new hard drives have implemented better loading times, better textures, better level of details on characters, etc. And it's all tied to the Xbox Velocity architecture, according to this uh, developer conference. Uh, things included in that are the SSD, direct storage, hardware decompression, and sampler feedback. So their goal with these new hard drives and this software is basically faster loading, longer draw distances, and better fast travel to give just a few examples. And no texture pop in during those fast travels, of course. Now I'm gonna get pretty nerdy here because I took a few notes and like this is right up my alley. I love this stuff. So, so those new hard drives in your Xbox Series X, they have a 2.0 gigabytes per second read speed. And the benefit here is that this hard drive decompresses right to the CPU. There are various things that would slow down your infrastructure when you're designing a game. And uh, what you want to do is you want to eliminate the the input to output as much as humanly possible. And I'm getting to the point in a second. So their sampler feedback tool, it's gonna increase the speed of that. So only what a, what a player sees in their field of view is going to be rendered. And hopefully I've put up the B-roll where they sort of talked about this. So you only load the assets that a player is seeing, like when they look around a room, for example, which frees up a lot of data and a lot of processing power to do other cool things. And according to what this developer said during this particular panel, you can discard over 99% of the raw data and still get great results. So with this technology, what they showcased and what they're saying is they can use one seventh of the power to render what you see in a given scene. And that means that they are gonna be freed up tremendously to do really, really, really cool things with this generation of hardware. There's also a whole suite of developer tools that they talked about, I'll get to in a second, but I really wanted to hit on this one first because some people were talking about it. I, I, I honestly, like they're, they're hype and they're excited, but I almost think they undersold it. Um, so let's compare right now. Uh, we have 22 seconds to render on the Xbox One X, right? A particular scene or the scene that they're using as an example. What that means is on the Xbox Series X, you will render that same scene in 0.19 seconds. 0.19. That is the advantage that these hard drives and this IO throughput gives you on the Series X and the Series X. Now, a lot of times, now I, I highly recommend, I don't mean to plug my own stuff on IGN, but I'm gonna anyway. I highly, highly recommend go check out the performance review playlist if you wanna see more of this in action. The first game that inspired me to make this series and launch it on IGN was Gears of War, and Gears of War was talked about throughout the GameStack presentation. So one of the things you'll do with sort of trickery that increases your frame time, which will ca cause frame rate uh, dips, for example, is you'll have to cut cameras. So you'll, like, you'll be looking here and then you'll cut over here to a different camera and you just want to delete anything that's not seen in your scene when you're doing game design, right? So they, they use tricks like that to cover it up. So with the sampler feedback aspect of this, this allows... Uh, level of details to be used to great effect. And what's being utilized here is Fidelity FX tools 
in a, oh, sorry, no, that's the next topic, sorry. Fidelity FX, we'll get to in a second. But what's being utilized here is basically they're targeting what is rendered in any given scene. And I talk about this in the Gears War video and the coalition actually sent over a clip that I was able to use in that video. And uh, I just, please go check it out. I spent a lot of time on that video. It's it's one of the my favorite performance reviews that I ever did. And uh, the coalition just did a masterful job of making Gears 5 absolutely gorgeous on the Series X. So, okay, I've showed you some of the, the ways in that, and just think about that, 0.19 seconds. That's how long it works. And while they're moving around the scene, at times, like once you stop moving your camera, you're using one seventh of your processing power. You're able to zoom in on an object and interact with it. And you're just like barely hitting the system. You have so much more wiggle room with the console. And I realize the, the demo they're using is a little bit rudimentary and uh, like not the fanciest thing in ever, but technology wise, it's truly impressive. So then we have the RDNA 2 implementations that they've been talking about, including the Fidelity FX tools that are available to developers now. And we've seen this utilized a little bit uh, in a few games like Dirt 5 and Rift Breaker were listed. So what this means, and Xbox already has ray tracing, it's implemented, but they're improving it. It's You're gonna be able to do better ray tracing included. And the example they show was really, really impressive. And actually there's a whole website about the AMD improvements on the Xbox platform and how well they look. A few of the ones that I captured included, uh, the shadows, like look at how pixely this shadow is in the distance and how smooth it is with this technology. It's really, really impressive. There's also texture tools that are being utilized with this suite of services that are, it's just going to mean all of us get better games in the long run. And, and in addition on the website, I really appreciated this. They utilized Dirt 5 to show one of the clearest examples of ambient occlusion I have ever seen. They use black and white and they show how shadows on the boxes and the differences actually have a drastic improvement. Now, a lot of this stuff, you're like, oh, whatever, Destin, it doesn't matter. It absolutely does. This immerses you further in your games. It gives the developers less work to do. Of course, they still have to place their lights and everything to make sure that all this is working to the standard that they want, but it means we get more immersive experiences and it has me tremendously excited for, like this is the start. We are at the beginning and it is being implemented better and better with each game that is released. So we're gonna get better ray tracing and they showed off how this improves shadows. And if that doesn't impress you, like, <laughs> It's, it's just a tool that they're able to implement at a few lines of code, right? In addition, like the, the TAA is smoothed all out. And then they also talked about the, the PIX tool, which has massive improvements for the console. So this was just a snippet of a few of the GameStack live conferences that I was able to check out. I saw people were talking about all of these things. And there's also... Uh, stuff like physics that I didn't even get to, like the Unity Physics dot package. It was developed in partnership with Havoc and uh, it needed to be cash free in order to better support scenarios such as simulation rollback for network simulations. And what they showed there is they show a bunch of blocks toppling over, right? But think about Battlefield when you're blowing up a building and those blocks are tumbling down. They are improving this technology to have better destructible environments, better interactions with objects, more realistic experiences, better shadows, better ray trace and reflections, more immersive experiences. And uh, wow, you know, I, I put more work into this video than I expected because it ended up being largely technical and I barely scratched the surface of what they are showcasing in these conferences. GameStack Live, if you're a nerd like I am, it's just so hype because when you see what they're talking about, they are talking about what is happening today and the tools that they're improving today for developers and how they have a direct impact on the games we're going to play. And it is so exciting because the games we're already playing, I would say, look, pretty stunning, right? Well, guess what? There's a whole suite of services coming down the, down the lane for developers to make even better experiences. And it sounds like these, these aren't like, I 
I cautiously use the word gimmicky. These aren't things like VR that are sort of like really, really eye catching. These are things about traditional game experiences that are just going to put them through the wharf roof. And in addition, of course, if you're a VR fan, this will have profound experiences for that also because you're going to get higher frame rates. You're going to get less jitteriness. The shadows are going to look better and you're going to be even more scared when that thing jumps at your face in Half-Life Alex or whatever. So regardless, all of this is really, really exciting to me. And I, I hope I've conveyed it in a way that you get it and you can see like, oh, wow, imagine what Halo is going to do with this. Imagine how Halo has improved over the last year when they've been looking at uh, variable rate shading or <laughs> variable rate uh, rendering of a scene so that you know, you're not rendering the whole scene in native 4K because you don't need to, which means we get a locked frame rate. And yeah, man, this was this was really, really exciting to go over. I Like I said, I, I hope you have a better, a little bit better understanding about what all this stuff is. If you want to know the TLDR, there is some really exciting tech and we're going to get some awesome looking games out of this. Hey, by the way, while I have you, if you like these sort of videos where I ramble late at night after watching a bunch of 30 minute long developer conferences, thank you so much for watching, first of all. Second of all, uh, if you want to see more like this, I try and post a day a video every day at 7 a.m. So please subscribe if you like this and hit the bell. I don't know what the bell does, but I hear it's magical. I really, really don't. So thank you to those of you who have subscribed. We're at 45,000 subscribers. That is insane. And secondarily, I did turn on memberships. I talk about this at the end of every video. If that is something you're interested in, just click the join button and you can see what I have set up there. Thank you to everyone who has joined the memberships already. I, I just turned it on on a whim and it is a slowly growing base of people who are like, Destin, we love what you're doing keep going. Here's a few bucks. So thank you to those of you who, who do that. Like I, I never expected it to go anywhere. Uh, I great, greatly appreciate it. Sorry. I'm rambling. I'm probably way over on time. Yeah. We're at 12 minutes. Exciting stuff for Xbox in the future. Get hype. I'll see you for the next one. I appreciate all of you have a wonderful day. Bye everyone.